The banqueting hall now, the only remaining part of um, the palace of Whitehall, which is where Charles II lived. And it used to stretch all the way down from here to um, Houses of Parliament. But this is where Charles II lived. And this is the room that, if you've seen Charles II, um, the very first scene where you see Charles' father, Charles I, walk through um, a great room, through a doorway to his execution. This is that very room. And he walked through here, through this door, proceeded out of that window, and through that window was a scaffolding that had been erected, and that's where they chopped Charles I's head off, right out there. I first came here a couple of days ago. It's the first time I'd ever seen it. It's quite extraordinary, and a lot of the action of Charles II actually takes place in um, at least an approximation of this room. I think finding Charles was a combination of what I found in the script, what was substantiated or backed up, not contradicted by Antonia Fraser's book, and what it um, set off in me in terms of um, little ways I could find of identifying and understanding why he would be a certain way. He gets very contradictory reactions from different people, different historians. Some people are very anti Charles II, some people aren't. And that's what's interesting about him, because he was both things. He was a good man and a bad man. He was, a, he was sometimes incredibly weak and ma manipulatable by ladies, women, and, and sometimes he was devastatingly harsh. He certainly had a weakness, especially um, Barbara Villiers, played by Helen McCrory. That particular character, which is very sexual, very dynamic and very passionate and all over the place, she, and not only she, but she could completely manipulate him by just simply bursting into tears and becoming emotional in a way that to him was like, oh, women do this, and, and he would just give them whatever they seemed to want. He'd completely, he'd fold, which is very unfortunate in a king, <laughs> you know, but um, that's very much part of the story. And it is no coincidence that all of the people who were able to manipulate him happened to have breasts. Um, he wasn't, he, that was his... He was very, um, he, he could read anyone, I think. He could always see what someone wanted or what they were really motivated by. On your oath. It seems very unfair, the fact that he forced his wife, his new wife, who we barely knew, who'd come all the way from Portugal, to accept his mistress, famously his mistress, as the head of her bedchamber. He was a cruel man, but no. I think he was inconsiderate, definitely. He, he was more concerned with Barbara and his own plight than he yeah. could have thought of her feelings more. Yeah. I think it's, if he felt that she was desperately upset, his nature was to try to make okay. He used to make her say things because he thought her voice was funny. Because he loved her accent. In the way that, you know, Americans <laughs> often say to English people, I say that again, I think your voice is adorable. Charles was that sensitive to her no. at the beginning. And she was nothing like he'd been used to. I mean, she was no. a virgin. Yes. Very religious. Uh, couldn't speak the language. <laughs> no, it, it, didn't, it didn't start <laughs> off very well, did it? But um, I think the lovely thing is, through the course of the course of a very long relationship together, they became it became a great love, I think. Um, yeah, and in fact, he sort of asked for her advice towards the end. Mm -hmm. Quite a stable relationship. It tends to be that old um, historical dramas or period dramas are filmed in such a way as they're obviously trying to get their money's worth. They're trying to, if they pay a lot for a location, then they make sure that they shoot it for a very long time in big wide shots, much into the faces and the emotions of the characters. And it's not showy, it's not as pretty as um, maybe some people would like it to be. But I think it's, it's, it's very um, exciting to watch, but it's not. As a second, I barely saw Prague at all, just the same one or two restaurants that I'd popped by on the way home before I went to sleep. But um, Prague's a beautiful place, and it, it was remarkably untouched after the Second World War, so it's very intact, beautiful architecture. It's a very nice place to be.